Jami Tiristi, thank you so much for joining us for a special episode of SITV today. We're here to talk about, that's right, the 19th Scudetto that Inter secured today with Atalanta tying against Asolo and Inter beating Crotone yesterday. But before we get started, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and a comment down below and su subscribe and share with your friends. Let us know what your thoughts are on the win and the securing the title, your reaction, your emotions. We love hearing from you guys. 19th Scudetto in the back guys, that's right, such an amazing feeling to be on top and being champions, uh, Campione d'Italia yet again uh, and it's been a 10 years uh, leading up to this title and it is such an amazing feeling to finally win after such a hard decade, seeing your hated rivals winning year after year, uh, not only that but the club changing ownership multiple times with uh, Eric Tohir, um, the whole fiasco. <laughs> with, uh, with uh, Guarin at that time, Guarin being the best player on the team, by the way, going to Juve, making them even stronger for Vucinic uh, and the way it stopped and buying the likes of Hernan Hernanes uh, to starting lineups with Gabi Mudingai, Yana Villa, Juan Jesus. It's been such a rough decade, guys, but here we are with some of the best players in, in the world in our starting lineup with Nicolo Barella, Lautaro Martinez, uh, Romelu Lukaku, Skriniar, De Vrij, Bastoni, uh, Hakimi, um, you, Eriksen, the whole lineup is fantastic and something that we're all proud of. It's such an unbelievable feeling and such a exciting future ahead for us. When you start, when you talk about this season, you can't help but think um, the, the importance of Beppe Marotta to this club. Um, in, as soon as he came on, he had to deal with the likes of Icardi and Wanda Nara and their whole fiasco and, and, and you know, shipping off Perisic and Angola immediately and, and, and now bringing back uh, Perisic and be having him become such an important part of the team. Uh, not only that, uh, but dealing the season with the ownership uh, rumors, with potential changes, uh, dealing with the media question, the barrage question that came his way, staying calm and collected, always being the cool head uh, in front of the camera and leading this team with such grace and dignity. It is so important for uh, for Inter's success that Beppe Morota continues and him dealing with Antonio Conte, getting Conte to work the way uh, he has, uh, and especially in the last six months, has been simply amazing. Uh, and, and it's all down to the grace and the leadership of Beppe Morota. Without him, there is no chance Inter is where it is today. So, so important for him to continue. Number one reason why, in my opinion, that Inter started this winning cycle is because of Beppe Morota. Um, second most important thing aspect here is um, Antonio Conte and his pragmatism this season. First half of the season, we saw a completely different version of Antonio Conte than we have in the last six, last six, six months. Um, he's, I think he's realized after the Champions League exit and the financial issues that the club was facing and the ownership and whatnot that, look, the squad is what I have. I'm not getting any reinforcements because the financial situation everybody is in in the world of football at the moment is really tough. So he, 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 he uh, rolled up his sleeves and went to work and he really figured out a way to, to use Ericsson, to use uh, um, Perisic in this lineup. And that completely changed the dynamic of this team because no longer you have to rely on the likes of Gagliardini and Vecino to start in this lineup, right? Vecino not really a fact this season, but Gagliardini has played a fair number of games this season. And, and without him in the lineup, against the team with the low blocks, you can see Inter have a completely different dynamic way of playing and attacking and unlocking the attack which is fantastic and so his pragmatism and realizing that he has to work with Eriksen and Perisic and rest of the squad bringing the whole squad together the way he did especially after that Milan the second derby win uh, against Milan uh, where where he told the club that really now we're at the top you don't need to look behind us you have your destiny in your hands and keep fighting and 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 he said every game is a final and that changed the mentality of a team which he notoriously has said a number of times didn't have a winning mentality <clears throat> and we know that uh the years of struggle of struggling to finish the fourth place and secure the last champions league spot to now winning the league it's a big difference uh and antonio conte kudos to him for turning this around um last but not least the most important aspect of um of this title winning run is the way the team has gelled together Ericsson be, be coming into the lineup nicolo barella continuing to shine and and also we know 
the importance of Hakimi in this lineup. He may have cooled off a tad bit in the last six months, but his importance in the dynamic uh, runs that he brings to the team adds another dimension where the defense and the opposing sides have to keep a constant eye on him because he makes these runs as he's in, once he's past you it's hard to catch and he's fairly accurate with his crosses he's fairly accurate with his shot a very dangerous piece in an Antonio Conte system which relies so heavily uh, on the wingbacks him uh, Hakimi Perisic Darmian all of them fantastic in certain parts of the season, but Ashley Young also called upon. He's done fairly well. Um, so the play of the team in general, uh, also so important down the stretch, especially learning the different ways that Conte likes, likes to attack, whether it's sitting back, hitting on the counter, possession-based play, you know, switching the ball around side to side to unlock uh, the defenses, to stretch them a little bit. Um, that ability to adapt to a situation and win the games uh, is what got us the final status of the way. We've seen in the past, the last few seasons even, we've seen the team struggle against the teams that play the low block uh, and, and really make it difficult to un get a goal and squeak out those 1-0 wins. You, you remember the notorious Bologna loss last year where a big reason why ultimately Inter dropped out of the race last season and you went this one. Uh, and this season, those games we've closed out and won. So, so that mentality adjustment has been so, so important for us. Well, we take a moment to celebrate this fantastic season. We have to take a step back and evaluate the next season and going into the offseason, what Inter has to take care of before the season begins, starting with the most important uh, positions of Beppe Marotta uh, and Antonio Conte. Both of their contracts, I think they're coming due relatively soon. And in Conte's case, it's coming into the last season of his contract. So can go into the last season with that being in limbo. He's done fantastically well in the last six months or so. You know, turning it around has become more pragmatic. I think he's become a bit more mature in how he's handled the matters around the club and the players uh, that the club can con with confidence move forward with him. He's done really well and it's important for continuity of the club that he continues to be the manager for the for, for the club. So re-signing him to a newer contract is important. Beppe Morata is such a central figure. Without him, there is no title, period. Forget about it. Uh, and he's recommitted himself. To in the long run with Inter, so it's important to also have his contract situation taken care of. Beyond that, I think you have to look at the goalkeeper position, the center back position, uh, and the attack and the left wing back position. These are the key areas where Inter has to address. But let's take a moment and, and understand who we have to first unload. Ranocchia's contract is up. He's gonna leave, he's not gonna come back. D'Ambrosio's contract is up. I think you re-sign him, he's a useful utility player integrated with the DNA of the club at this point and with the financial situation the club is in it's okay to keep him around he's been a productive member of the defense uh, and he has that aspect of being dynamic to play front double positions which Antonio Conte uh, desires so it's a big plus on that aspect as well Vidal has to go period no questions about it he's been a disaster this season really underperformed uh, and the wages he makes is ultimately you know a casualty that we can't afford at this point uh, in the financial situation that we're in so he has to leave as well the Nokia's contract is up like I said and he's he is likely going to leave um, so Handanovic has been a fantastic player for us a number of years and he's coming to a point in his career where he does not need to be relied upon every 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 week and every game his performance levels have dropped and you drop points as a result of that as well so going forward we need to have a viable goalkeeper uh, who can really start in place of Andanovic and maybe even challenge him for the starting spot. So we have had the likes of Granio, Musso being rumored as well as Silvestri from Hellas Verona as a potential replacement. So we'll have to see how, how that position develops, but really important for Inter to replace Andanovic or at least have a option other than him uh, available on the bench. Uh, Maximovic would be a good replacement for Ranocchia. His contract is also due, so not maybe not requiring too much in terms of the transfer fee uh, that Napoli is known to be very stringent so you don't have to deal with that either um, so it's important to find sign a, a defender who can replace the likes of uh, De Vrij, Bastoni or um, uh, Skriniar as well um, uh, and, and not lose the quality in attack. Kolarov is also another player that has to go an utter disaster in my opinion as well absolutely no place for him going forward and he i expect him and Vidal to both leave Lukaku has been such a fantastic player we rely too much on him we need a viable backup option for him as well to sustain the level of quality uh in europe as well as in in Serie A uh, whether it's Jacko, whether it's Giroud whether it's Simi from Crotone 
or any other player who can actually uh, hold his drone and let the play develop. Uh, Lautaro Martinez, I think it's a luxury at this point. Sanchez has done admirably, but I think there have been times in the season where we've seen uh, Lautaro not available, Sanchez starting in his place and inter dropping uh, quality in their attack and not creating as much. Uh, Sanchez has been fantastic, specifically coming off the bench, providing a spark. And I think that's his role going forward. But but Inter needs to have another option in attack. Uh, and, and certainly Pinamonti is not one that Conte relies upon too much. So that is also a position of need for it, for Inter. Left wing back position, you have Ashley Young. Potentially he, he will likely leave. You can sign a replacement in terms of DiMarco coming back. Potentially um, uh, from Hellas Valona, he's been fantastic. And I think that would be a good plus. Plus there's also other options available. Valentino Lazzaro is also going to be an interesting piece to see what Inter does with him. Delbert is a done deal. I think there's no place for him on the squad. Um, he's a disaster waiting to happen. So Inter will have to really figure out what to do with Joe Mario and him as well. Thanks again for joining us guys for this special episode of SITV. We look forward to the remaining four games on the season. Let us know in the comments down below. How did you celebrate? What are your thoughts? What do we need to do going forward? And, and everything we discussed in this video, feel free to leave your thoughts. Uh, we love hearing from you guys and interacting with you. So with that, ciao, take care, enjoy, and celebrate with care. Sopra!